What is up, everybody? My name is Sam, and today we will be having our very first NFL mock draft. But first, we will be recapping on the NBA playoffs and some topics that came up. And starting off with our NBA topics, we have Ime Yudoka being hired for the head coaching job at Houston. Congratulations for him for getting that job. Of course, we didn't know with the whole situation um, early with Boston. We didn't really know if he was going to coach again, but here he is in Houston. Hopefully, he can put some culture in, and hopefully, Alfred Shangun, Jabari Smith, and Jalen Green can develop up and finally get some reps and be semi-competitive for a play-in slash not being in the top four but congratulations to houston now let's get started with the playoff recap one series that is over the 76ers versus the brooklyn nets the 76ers swept but with joel Embiid missing game four due to injury and they're uncertain with him missing missing the next series but which is a good thing because the series um who they're going to play next is extended now as the hawks force a game six versus the boston celtics going back to atlanta but with no Dejounte murray force a game six shout out to them i mean i have had completely disrespected the atlanta hawks and the miami Heat. we'll get to the miami Heat right now but Forcing the game six against the two seed, one of the best teams in the NBA. I mean, competitive basketball, I love it. Competitive playoff basketball. I mean, I'm glad this wasn't just a pushover in Atlanta showing you why they should be taken seriously. And maybe they're just a few moves away from making a huge big run again. But, I mean, I really don't know. I'm hope I'm hoping for a game seven. But I have a feeling Boston is going to take care of business in Atlanta. But I said that... I was thinking that earlier in Game 5, like, oh, Boston's just going to take care of business. But, man, nope. Here, I'm hoping for a Game 7 and Jason Tatum needs to be better. He had an absolute stinker this past game, and that's why Atlanta was able to win this game. And Trey Young showed out. All the, every, all the other road players showed out. And let's get to the next series. The Denver Nuggets take care of business in 5. Anthony Edwards is an absolute superstar. He averaged, I believe, about almost 30 this whole entire play, this playoff run, which is, of course, only five games, but shout out to him. I mean, now we kind of go into the thing what's next with the um, Minnesota Timberwolves. Is it enough with the whole Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns situation? I think it's a little too early. You might have to just go into next season and see how it rolls. But, of course, he might be losing Kyle Anderson due to some drama and him getting paid by another team. But it is what it is. Anthony Edwards becoming a super superstar in this playoff run. Jamal Murray, Nicole Yoke, so the Nuggets doing what they should have done in five. You know I mean, they wish they probably wish in four, but it is what it is. At least you get it done. And last, we have the Suns winning in five versus the Clippers. I mean, no Kawhi, no chance. But Russell Westbrook and Norman Powell fought, and Terrence Mann fought to keep it close. But Devin Booker is just the man. He's been the man this whole entire playoff run for the um, Phoenix Suns this whole this whole series. And, I mean, what more can he ask for? I mean, hopefully he can keep it consistent. I mean, he has been playing over 40 minutes a game, which is could be crazy, especially that you have the Denver Nuggets, who is a very deep team next round. And, I mean, hopefully they can figure out some rotation so where he doesn't have to play 40 minutes. But... We will be having a, a second round recap on Friday, and we'll be talking more about the Suns versus the Nuggets. And the next series with tonight's games, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are down 3-1 against the New York Knicks. They're in Cleveland for this game, and man, I mean, the New York Knicks just have been the bigger team, the better team, the more deep team. I mean, I mean hopefully Evan Mobley learns from this and says, you know what, i got to put on a little bit more muscle. And I got to, you know, work so I can be the five. And, I mean, everyone's already talking about Jared Allen being shipped away because he might be the odd man out. I mean, I, that might be a little premature. But, I mean, yeah, this this, um, this Cavs, they need depth. They need, I mean, they can't rely on D. Wade and Ricky Rubio. I mean, they let go of Kevin Love, and now he's been playing amazing in, in Miami. But, man, only, only um, Devin, um, sorry. Only Donovan Mitchell can do so much. Only Darius Garland can do so much. And Donovan Mitchell has been struggling. The New York Knicks have become a really big defensive team this this um, playoff run so far. And Jalen Brunson has been, without a doubt, the best player in the series. Without a doubt. And hopefully, I mean, I don't want to jinx it, but we'll get to, we'll get to the second round. Um, we'll get to the second round predictions on Friday. But 
Hopefully the Knicks take care of it here, but I actually would want them to win in the Garden, because I mean, I mean that'd be electric for them to win to go to the next round in New York. But ho I mean, hopefully they take care of it today so that they can get some rest. And the next game we have the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Memphis Grizzlies. LeBron James had a huge game. Dylan Brooks refused to talk to the media after the game, um, game four, I believe, or game five. And um, yeah. <laughs> LeBron with the 2020, which is ridiculous. At 38 years old, he is the oldest person to do that. And here I have the Grizzlies winning. They're not going to lose. I don't think they're going to lose in Memphis. I believe this game is in Memphis, but I don't have I have them winning this game and hopefully pushing the series to seven. And they can't go down. They can da definitely lose this game because they're already down 3-1. And hopefully they can push through. And Job Moran, I believe, is going to go down. He's not going to go down without a fight. It's going to be a gritty game. Xavier Tillman has to step up. Jaron Jackson Jr. has to be on his move. And Anthony Davis cannot have a game. And LeBron James, they can't be dominant on the boards pretty much. And that's what's pretty much been losing them all these games. And Rui Hachimura or Austin Reeves can't go for 20 each. Or both of them can't go for 20, which has been ridiculous. Shout out to them. And the most surprising series so far, the Miami Heat versus the Milwaukee Bucks, the Miami Heat, the A seed is up 3-1 against the one seed. I mean, my apologies to my Miami Heat. I was talking about when they were in the plane. I, they weren't even there yet. Like, yeah, they might get one game. They might get swept. It's the Milwaukee Bucks. But, you know, I mean, not to discredit him, Giannis is hurt. And he hasn't been playing too well. He did, I mean, he did miss the few games, and they did win that one game. But... Man, Jimmy Jimmy Butler had the performance of a time, of a lifetime in Game Four, but they needed every single bucket to win that. And that's what I think that the Bucks could come back and win this. But man, going back to Miami in Game Six, that's going to be tough to win. But I have um, the Milwaukee Bucks winning today, forcing six, and hopefully live another day. If I want to say Heat and six, but if somehow the series goes to seven, I have Milwaukee winning at seven. I mean, I got to give Giannis some respect because, I mean, he is a defending champion. He is a two-time MVP in the league. But Jimmy Buck, Jimmy Buckets, man, he is just another monster. And then the most, most exciting series this whole entire playoffs, the Kings versus the Warriors. Game four was crazy. It was down to the wire. Um, you had... Um, Darren, Darren Fox with a clutch, um, with a clutch three pointer to tie the game and then you, or bring him close to tying the game. And then you had, you found out that he was playing the last few minutes with a broken index finger, which is crazy. And then Harrison Barnes just chunking up threes and pretty much losing them this game. But here they're back in Sacramento an away team has not won a game yet, but here I don't have that stopping. And I have the Sacramento Kings winning game five, taking a three, two lead. And now. It is time for our NFL mock draft, our first mock draft of the channel. And here, we're going to be kind of doing a mock draft, but also which other players I think that should be picked. I'll probably give the one for sure player, and then other players like, oh, I could see this player here, this player here, but let's start, Let's get started. And of course, with the first overall pick, the, new, the Carolina Panthers select Bryce Young from Alabama. I mean, this is an easy pick right here. I don't... I mean, I don't want to disrespect Will Levis, but I don't see the hype of him going one or two. And, I mean, here the Panthers, you trade up, you get the quarterback that you wanted, and you get him. Bryce Young, he seems like this is the guy that the Panthers want, and you get him right here. And at number two, which is kind of a weird pick and a hard pick to do, the Houston Texans, I have them picking C.J. Stroud from OSU. Um, this one's really hard because, you know, <clears throat> they do have a very defensive-minded um, head coach, and he could be like, you know what, we can go Will Anderson here, and we'll just go defense, defense, and you know what, Connor Williams looks like the guy. He looks like, you know, he's better than all these quarterbacks here. But man, I think I think if you have two, that's the best option because you can't really rely on getting one, especially with the Cardinals being bad next year, which we'll get to right now, and a lot of other teams being really bad. But man. Yeah, I have C.J. Stroud here. I wouldn't be surprised if Anthony Richardson gets here at two, but I, I like C.J. Stroud here with the Houston Texans. And at three, I mean, 
the Cardinals can trade down, which I think that could really happen because they don't really they can really benefit and get more draft picks, especially with Kyler Murray missing most of the season. And you know, might as well just get some draft picks. You're going to be bad next year, most likely get the number one pick for how bad they will be. And you know, trade someone with someone that really wants. You know, they's like, oh, I can see the Colts getting Anthony Richardson. I want to jump them so they don't get them. But I have them here taking Will Anderson from Alabama. And, I mean, they just stack up on defense. That is what it is. I mean, it's a, it's a safe pick, really, because, you know, we don't really know what the whole Jalen Carter stuff, and we'll get to that right now. And with the fourth pick, the Indianapolis Colts will be selecting Anthony Richardson, who is my favorite quarterback of this draft class. I believe he has a really high ceiling, but his floor can be really low. But I believe he could really develop, and he has a really strong run game, which would you would want with a um, Jonathan Taylor, and with that offense could be really electric with a Michael Pittman Jr. And there you go, Anthony Richardson at four, um, Will Anderson at three, we have C.J. Stroud at two, and Bryce Young at one. We have three quarterbacks in the top four, and at five we have the Seattle Seahawks selecting Jalen Carter from Georgia. I mean, I really don't know with the whole situation with him. There has been rumors that the um, Seattle Seahawks said that they are not interested in Jalen Carter because of the personal issues and the legal issues. But I also have them that they could be taking Tyree Wilson from from Texas Tech. But here I have them taking Jalen Carter because, I mean, besides all that, as a player-wise, he is the best player in this draft. And let's go on to number six. Number six, the Detroit Lions will be selecting Christian Gonzalez from Oregon, I believe to me he is the best corner in this draft class. And that's what the Lions need. They just need to get more young with this defense. Of course, you had the suspension with, um, I mean, they were being Vegas on the sidelines, you know, gambling and all that. But here, Christian Gonzalez, a guy who can really play make with the ball. He is my favorite corner, and I think he is the best corner in this draft class here going to Detroit. And at number seven, the Las Vegas Raiders will be getting Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech. Here, they just fill up the defensive line because it just seemed like everybody just ran through them all season long. And, I mean, Max Crosby just, that's how you say it. Um, yeah, they just need, I mean, they really just need help on the defensive side. And I don't think they'll be taking a, a quarterback here because, I mean, they gave Jeremy Garoppolo a decent amount of money, and I think they could be kind of, at least they think they could be competitive with him. And, I mean, yeah, here, Tyree Wilson. I don't really have much to explain that. And let's go to eight. The Atlanta Falcons will be selecting JSN, the first wide receiver off the board from Ohio State. Here we have Desmond Ritter, who I think they believe is they're going to be their quarterback for the perceivable future. And give him some weapons. Him, Drake London, Kyle Pitts. And then you have... Um, I'm blanking here. Algier, I believe, the running back. I mean, that's a solid offense, and hopefully you can build off with the defense later on in the in the next few days of the draft. And at number nine, the Chicago Bears select Peter Skarnowski. Sorry if I'm butchering it. From Northwestern here. I mean, you got to get offensive line to protect Justin Fields. The man was scrambling for his life last year. And here you protect your quarterback for the future, Justin Fields. And... I mean, that's all you can ask for, you know, build the line so he can be able to pass very well and he can run the ball very comfortably. And at 10, we have the Philadelphia Eagles with drafting Paris Johnson Jr. from Ohio State here. I mean, the same thing as I said earlier with um, the Chicago Bears, you got to protect your quarterback and your offensive line is getting older. So why not have younger blood, you know, just getting ready from the bench, you know, just getting ready, getting them reps in from behind and I mean, whenever someone retires or someone gets traded, boom, you got Paris Johnson Jr. right there getting ready with the reps, and he is not, he does not miss a step blocking for Jalen Hurts. And congratulations to Jalen Hurts for getting his contract. And at number 11, we have Will Levis going to the Tennessee Titans. Man, I really have mixed feelings about the Tennessee Titans, but, you know, here you take Will Levis, and, I mean, like I said earlier, I don't really see the hype of him going one or two. I mean, this seems like a really Zach Wilson push again. I mean, Zach Wilson, you know, he had some solid plays during the his college season, and then out of nowhere, he just jumps Justin Fields. And I feel like the same thing's happening with um, C.J. Stroud. He's not getting the respect as Justin Fields did not get the respect in his draft class. But here, 
the Titans don't have to move up or anything, and they get Will Levis here, and they get a quarterback that can really sit behind Tannehill if this pushes them to, like, you know what, we can trade Tannehill and get something, some picks or something, so we can um, move on with the future. And the Texans with their second pick here at 12. I have him here taking Devon Witherspoon from Illinois. He is the second best cornerback in this draft. And here it's like, you know what, we just stack up on talent. Why not? Our defense just gets better. And, I mean, it is what it is. You get defense gets better. I mean, that's not bad at all. And here at 13, the Packers from the Aaron Rodgers trade going to the Jets. And with the Jets will have 15. We'll get to that right now. The Packers will have Dalton Kincaid here. Packers need more weapons for um, Jordan Love. And it, it kind of sucks to say that they get more weapons after Aaron Rodgers leaves. And that's what he's been asking for the whole entire time that he's been there. Give me some more weapons. Give me more weapons. And then here they draft a very, very good tight end in Dalton Kincaid. And, yeah, Jordan loves the future here. And let's get on with number 14. And number 14, yes. Oh, man. There has been a lot of B. John Robinson um, rumored here, but I don't I don't really see it. It might be my bias here. You'll see where he goes later on. But I don't, I don't think they have Ramon J. Stevenson, and I think he's a very solid backup. And they have guys that, you know, they come out of nowhere, and they're just like, oh, they're solid running backs that does the job well. But here I have them taking Nolan Smith. Why not get the defensive line better? I mean, Belichick is a very defensive-minded coach. And why not you have Nolan Smith, who is a very talented um, end defender? And why not just, I mean, you're getting their line better. You're getting defense better at the end of the day. And I don't see what's wrong with that, especially with the division that has Aaron Rodgers now, Josh Allen, and Tua Tungvaloya. So you definitely need your defense a lot better. And here at 15, the the New York Jets. This is from, the, of course, the Aaron Rodgers trade. And I'm here taking Darnell White, right from um, from Tennessee. Here you have a tackle. You have a tackle that can um, protect Aaron Rodgers, and that's all you need. They have the weapons on offense. They have the weapons on defense. And here they just need the line to help Aaron Rodgers. And if Aaron Rodgers can be healthy and protected, this, I mean, there's already a whole, like, is he going to play ne- the year after next year? Like, is he going to play in 2024? I mean, that's a whole other video. But, I mean, here if he's protected and he's able to throw the ball well to his receivers and well protected and not hurt, I mean, why not? And just get him get him the offensive line that he needs. And at 16, the Washington Commanders, they will be, um, sorry. The Washington Commanders will be drafting Broderick Jones from Georgia. Here, they build up the offensive line. I mean, man, you don't really you have you have Sam Howell, who could be your quarterback for for now, like your bridge quarterback. But I mean, why not just build the offensive line until you get your um you get your quarterback? I mean, and then once you get your quarterback, you don't have to worry about drafting an offensive line. And here. They might go defense because as I'm recording this today, they're not going to be picking up Chase Young's um, offer or um, his option because of, the, of course, the injuries and all that. But here I have them taking a tackle to build that O-line in Washington. And at number 17, the Steelers who are also a really weird team to draft because I think they could draft an offensive line, which they are a tackle. But here, a lot of the great tackles have been taken already. And here, I have them taking a cornerback. I have them taking a Joey Porter Jr. And, I mean, why not? Your defense gets better. Mike Tomlin, defensive coach. And at number 18, the Lions here. The Lions need more weapons with Jared Goff. Um, um, Armin Ross St. Brown needs help. Of course, you lost TJ Hawkinson. And... You don't really have much after that, and you kind of have DeAndre Swift. You kind of – you don't really have much offensively. And here I have them taking Jordan Addison from USC. I mean, that's another wide receiver threat that you get. And you have two picks, so you get to go one offense, one defense, and you get to take the upside with these two players who are very young and athletic. And, I mean, in the future you might want to get – you know, they might be in the contention to get a um, a quarterback, but here I have them taking Christian Gonzalez and Jordan Addison, who is one of the best wide receivers in this draft class. And at number 19, the Buccaneers here will be selecting Calgin Cansey. Sorry if I'm butchering that. Here from Pittsburgh. Here is another team that can trade up for a um, Will Levis or Anthony Richardson, but 
I don't think any team would really want to trade with them to trade all the way down to 19 unless they just move their way up somehow slowly, 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 slowly. But, yeah, here, just why not get the defense? You're losing a lot. Of, you lost a lot on defense this offseason and just need to build it up. And, and um, Kansi is a great, great, super strong Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald comparisons for about his size and how strong he is. And why not take that upside with a team that obviously is trying to rebuild after losing Tom Brady this offseason? And at 20, the Seattle Seahawks with their second pick. I have here taking Osiris Torrance. I believe that's how you say it. I'm sorry if I'm butchering it again. A guard from Florida here. You need a quarter. You need a guard in an offensive line that's going to protect Geno Smith. Of course, that was a huge problem with Russell Wilson. But, of course, after he left, that's what they started doing, doubling down the offensive line. And here, you build in more. Protect your, quarterback, your quarterbacks and protect your running backs so they can block more. And, of course, with Kenneth Walker being injured, here you hopefully get better blocks for him so he does not have to hurt his body that much this season. And at 21 here, which I think is another Bijan Robinson landing spot, of course, with the questionable doubts of Austin Eckler's future here in um, here with the Chargers. But here, I have I have the Chargers getting um, Justin Herbert more um, more weapons. Zay Flowers from Boston College. I mean, he is very he is a little undersized, but that's what they need. They need a smaller guy. They have two big wide receivers in Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. And here, um, Zay Flowers really opens up the field for Justin Fields. And here, they could this could also be another like a Michael Mayer. A Michael Mayer um, pick right here, but Zay Flowers, I think, is the perfect pick right here for the Chargers. <clears throat> and at 22, the Baltimore Ravens select Derrick Banks. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong again. I'm horrible with names, and my handwriting is not the best. But here from Maryland, a cornerback, they build off on the defense, and I don't think really. Um, not really any wide receivers here worth taking. Of course, you do have Quinn and Johnston, but you do have Odell. You do have Mark um, Mark Andrews, and it is a lot to build off from. But I believe you can do um, trades to get some wide receivers. And here, you just build on your defense. And with the 23rd overall pick, the Minnesota Vikings will be selecting Quinton Johnson from TCU. Here, you get Justin Jefferson some, some help. He can be the only one you know, catching the balls out there. He needs help. He lost Adam Thielen. Get Justin Jefferson some help. And at 24, my favorite pick for the Jags here, they get a steal. They get Brian Branch from Alabama. The man can play pretty much the whole entire backfield in the defensive side. And he is a very strong and fast player and knows how to play ball. Here, I mean, his range, he could be here. He could fall the way here at 24. I think he can even go to 12 if, um, if the Texans really want to go double down on defense. But here... At 24, Jaguars get Brian Branch. And at 25, which was a really weird pick, the New York Giants will be selecting Anton Harrison from the University of Oklahoma. Here it would be, they would be obviously wide receiver, but I don't think uh, Josh Downs is a, I think that would be too much of a reach here, but you never know with the draft. I think a Quinton Johnson would have been perfect here. A Jordan Addison would have been perfect here, but here, this whole entire draft is pretty much we're going to get these tackles. We're going to get these guards to protect our quarterbacks, and that's what they're doing here. They're going to protect Daniel Jones because that's going to be their quarterback for the next two, three years. And here at 26, the most unbiased pick of the whole entire draft, my favorite pick, my Dallas Cowboys will be selecting from the University of Texas, Bijan Robinson. I mean, I would be ecstatic if this happens. I hope this happens. Um... Bijan Robinson to the Cowboys. Hope that, you know, I want you to comment down that. Bijan Robinson to the Cowboys. Wish us some luck. And hopefully something like that happens. And at 27, Emmanuel Forbes will be going to the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills defense has been absolutely slaughtered these past few years by the Kansas City Chiefs and the Bengals. And here you get a cornerback like cornerback, excuse me, like Emmanuel Forbes to build on the defense so they won't get absolutely murdered. But, I mean, of course, they would they they could get a wide receiver here, but they would have to trade up because I don't think, like I said earlier, a Jordan Addison, a Quentin Johnston would, um, or even a Zay Flyers would even fall to close to here without going through the Vikings, the Giants, or maybe even the Cowboys if they feel risky about getting another wide receiver. And at number 27, probably one of the best picks in the draft, 
Michael Mayer will be going to the Cincinnati Bengals as a Hayden Hurst replacement. That is amazing. Joe Burrow gets another weapon and just opens up the field for him. We get T. Higgins out here. You get um, Jamar Chase over here, and then you get Michael Mayer just running down the field, ready for a deep ball. The rich get richer. And let's go with the 29th pick. The Saints will be from via, um, via 49ers, I believe. Lucas Van Ness from Iowa here. They build on the defense so they can have a solid defense. Their, their division is very, I don't want to say weak, but it's not that competitive in the past few years, especially losing Tom Brady. And here, hopefully defense is good enough to win the division. That's all you can really matter with their new um, quarterback, Derek Carr. And at number 30, the Philadelphia Eagles will be selecting Miles Murphy. I mean, the rich get richer here. You work on the defense. The defense is getting older. And here you have Miles Murphy from Clemson who can just work from the vets, learn from the vets, and hopefully when the time is right, he can come out and shine. And here, of course, as you know, this is a shorter draft. It is only 31 picks because the Miami Dolphins did have to forfeit their first-round pick. And at third number 31, probably the most electric pick is going to be in the whole entire draft because it is in Kansas City. And the reigning defending Kansas City Chiefs will be selecting Will McDonald from Iowa State here. You work on the defensive line. Of course, you know, with the AFC having such great running backs, you got to work on the defensive line. And you got to give Chris Jones some help. And here, the rich get richer, of course. And that it will do it for our very first NFL mock draft. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I want you to comment down below who you want your favorite team to draft. And we will be having a an NFL um we'll be having a kind of a reaction size grading of these of the NFL draft, of course, on Friday. And we'll be having a prediction of round two on Friday for the NBA playoffs. Hopefully most of the series are done. I want you to comment down below who you have, who you want your favorite team to draft and who you think is going to win these NBA series. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Peace.